Right now there's a sweetness in the atmosphere. Absorb it. Drink it in. Open up your door of your heart and just welcome the sweetness of God's love for you. He's bathing you right now. It's sweetness. Look for the nuance of the spirit. The nuance of the spirit right now is a sweetness, and that's his attitude toward you. And it doesn't matter where you're at, what your condition is right now, his love never changes towards you. So receive receive forgiveness for being kind of uh, out of it this week, anybody that applies to, and just receive that loving forgiveness and drink in the sweetness of God. Come on, you've had a rough week. That's You're not alone. There's people that have rough weeks all over the country, all over the world, and they love Jesus, but Jesus loves them, and he's been pursuing them. Just as Jason was preaching last week, if you had any idea, the level of pursuit. So drink in the sweetness of God. I just drink it in. There's a sweet, sweet fragrance. And as we drink it in, as he is to us, so are we in this world. So we release that fragrance, that we're going to be like a flower garden here this morning. We're going to release the sweet fragrance of Jesus. We're going to have the scent and the aroma of all of the oil. Who is this that comes out of the wilderness like smoke, bearing all of the uh, merchant's ointments, a sweet smelling of myrrh and frankincense and all that applies to the anointing and it doesn't even measure up to the sweetness of the anointing we thank you for this in jesus name amen you may be seated paul could you come up here a minute I just see the prayer of the Lord is laying upon my heart that this is a new chapter in your life and God is going to bring you into a place of bountiful harvest, that this is your year of harvest. 2018 is going to be exceedingly abundantly above all that you would ever ask or think in and of yourself. And God says that I'm bringing, I'm bringing connections, <laughs> Canop connectors, uh, I am bringing <laughs> connections into your life that are going to become an asset to you and you're going to see a rapid exponent, exponential expansion in the days ahead. Amen. Amen. Think it. Sit on that for a while. All right. And also Margie, would you come up please? I just see. Jennifer, you want to come up here and help me with this? We're going to we're going to we're going to uh, give you both barrels but the spirit of the lord says daughter this chapter that you're in right now that started in the beginning of february is going to be one of exceeding abundance and overflow that god says you haven't seen nothing yet that i am bringing again relationships that are significant connections even even in the months ahead god's saying i'm going to start and burn a fire in your heart and the passion's going to increase and you're going to be on the front line of all that god begins to do in 2018 you're going to be a forerunner and just as that uh, they named it after that automobile forerunner, that Toyota forerunner. God says you're going to run on all four wheels, and you're going to you're going to travel, and you're going to be in places that you didn't think you would ever go to. And God says the places that nobody else wants to go to, but I'm going to send you to those places and those people. And that's even here in the states that I'm going to send you to these places. And God is going to say I'm going to take that anointing that is upon you, and I'm going to multiply it because you're going to be one who multiplies. And the El Shaddai anointing is upon you the God of multiplication, the God who is more than enough, the God who is exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ever ask or think. And Margie, I hear the Lord saying that there have been things that haven't looked like they, they fit together right. There have been some things you haven't understood. There have been some things your heart's been crying out been crying out for and the lord says this year i'm beginning to assemble the pieces of your life as though they were a precious golden chain and the lord says i'm going to bring order i'm going to give you clarity i'm putting things together and i see the lord pouring his anointing oil all over that chain he's forming and the lord says lift your vision higher because the Lord says, I have something bigger and greater and more wonderful for you than you've even dreamed, says the Lord. So fasten your seatbelt because now it begins. Amen. Amen. And everyone else that wants a prophetic word, stand up because I've got a word that's for all of you anyway. No one's going to be left undone. 
The Spirit of the Lord says, I am drawing forth my tongues of fire for you individually. I know exactly where you're at, and I know exactly, I know exactly what I'm going to be doing with you in the days ahead. Submit to me. Consent, yield, and obey. Think of those three things. Consent, yield, and obey. Consent, yield, and obey. And I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters are going to prophesy. You're going to begin to have the babes, even in your own homes. You're going to have the young ones. You're going to have the grandchildren. They're going to start speaking prophetically to your heart. They're going to start speaking into your future. You're going to start seeing, well, I thought I was mentoring them. And God's saying, I'm going to take the babes, and I'm going to cause them to rise up with a new anointing, and they're going to speak to you, and they're going to instruct you. Because where God's saying they're going to instruct you is they're going to show you ways that are outside of the box outside of your religious forms outside of the ways that you're accustomed to doing things and all of a sudden you're going to see a new arena of young people who are going to rise up and they're going to take the lead and the banner is going to be the victory banner they're going to have the jehovah nisi anointing to wherein they're going to say victory is this way this is the straight and the narrow path not the broad road this is the straight and narrow this is not the road of religion this is the road of relationship and i'm going to teach them they're going to teach the older people intimacy and it's going to turn the hearts of the father to the children, but oh, it's going to turn the hearts of the children to the fathers. For there is about to take place, even in this place, an awakening that is going to surprise you pleasantly. For the Lord said, Hosea 3, 5 is about to happen. He says, Hosea 3, 5, in a living Bible translation, basically said, afterwards, after they've exhausted their own efforts, after they've come to the end of themselves, after they've tried everything and it doesn't work, after they've done every argument they can think of, and after they've made every excuse they can come up with, God says by my spirit afterwards, they shall return to the Lord their God and to the Messiah their King, and they will come trembling and submissive to him, to the Lord and his goodness in these end times. His goodness in the end times. Come on. Anybody with the name of Dennis can now prophesy? Hallelujah. You know, these two right here, are anybody ever hear of Elka Seltzer? Remember that? Some of you guys, young guys might not know it. But God's taken this couple and turned them into pop, pop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. <laughs> And what he did was, he dunked them in the water of his word and took their wounds, healed them. You all, you all know this. Well, I'm saying this for you because that's what he's doing to you. Because you're drinking and you're seeing an example of pop, pop, fizz, fizz. And the world is saying, oh, what a relief it is. You mean I can be healed? You mean my anguish is causing some of my sickness? You mean Jesus is actually already in here and I don't have to run up there and get him? You know? And... There are no such things. I can hear you. You probably preach this message. There are no setbacks once you receive Jesus Christ. Now, the devil wants you to think they are. There's just setups. Isn't that right? You're actually, when you get a setback, you're a fullback. And the ball's coming to you. If you know, if you're learning from what they're giving and what others have been called to raise up right now to give, the ball's coming to you. This whole play of setback was designed and appointed for you to receive the ball in your hands. And if you advance, as you keep advancing like they have, they don't have just one offensive line. They're like Elijah and Gehazi, and you are too. The more we enter into God's plan, purposes, and pursuits, we have six offensive lines. It's like, open his eyes, let him see, Lord, there's more with us than there are with them. Why? Because you're entering into the purpose of the king. And you begin by your son's message, you are the great pearl. I am a pearl before the Lord. And as I enter that identity of who I am, then I start having faith. This isn't a setback. This is a divine setup. Okay? I'm going to bring into order what's not in order and get aligned and watch what happens. And I hear the Lord say to you, stop looking back 
at the good old days. Stop looking back at previous revivals. Stop looking back at previous awakenings. Stop looking back even to the book of Acts, the Lord says, for I have appointed unto you, unto this generation, young and old, joined together, I have appointed unto you to walk in the greater works and move in the greater love. And the Lord says, I am taking up the past and I'm wrapping it up. I'm going to bring everything into full restoration that's been spoken by the mouth of the prophets and messed up my man. The Lord says, I'm gathering it up and I'm releasing it on your generation. And the Lord says, the cloud of witnesses is looking down from heaven upon you and upon this generation and what the Lord is getting ready to do. And this morning I saw Jesus when we were in worship and he was extending the scepter as the scepter was extended to Esther. And the Lord says, ask what you will, even up to half of my kingdom, says the Spirit of God, for it is yours. Amen. 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 Jennifer's seen some other things that she hasn't shared recently, but I know that I know it's coming into a culmination. She also saw the Lord plant the flag of awakening. And we are in the process right now of our other building, setting it up as a TV studio so that our our programs are on Sid Ross Television uh, Network. We're already on the ISN Network, but this will be on the Television Network. And that studio is almost ready. <laughs> and we will be resuming Tuesday night tapings for that. Now, that room only holds about 40 people. So you will have to make some kind of an arrangement on how to attend on Tuesday night. But it'll be set up. Here's the interesting thing. When we went to this little building, at that time we thought God was going to take us somewhere else in the country. And God showed us a building, a little building. And I'm going, he says, there's your relocation. And I said, well, I could walk there from my house. You know, I didn't see that as a relocation. But then I walked in. It was a former dental lab. And it had like uh, half a dozen rooms. And the Lord gave me a name for each one of those rooms. And the one... <clears throat> The first one I gave him a name for, he says, you call that the coffee shop because that's going to be where the awakening starts. And I kind of forgot all about it. We set it up with little coffee shop signs, you know, you know, stay awake, <laughs> you know, drink coffee, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, we had a, a uh, professional uh, uh, person come in and do our set at that other building for television. And he set it up in coffee house motif you know the edison light bulbs that kind of thing and jason's working on that we still need a lot of technical stuff done but the the bulk of it is ready to go so i just thought isn't that funny we're setting it up kind of like a coffee house for what for an awakening what else wake up <laughs> so it didn't dawn on me till this week why I named those different rooms. And one, we hung grapes uh, in the little kitchen area. And the only reason God said to hang the grapes was because there's power in the cluster. That, uh, in, right? New in the the new wine in the cluster. And God was saying, unity, you're going to project a people who were not a people who have become a people. That if you were to hold up a single grape right here, it would be difficult to identify it. But if we held up a cluster of grapes, that design is unmistakable. It's a clear perception of what we are. Because we were not just called to be individual grapes. We are called to be a cluster. For the anointing is in the cluster. And so, Father, we thank you. We thank you that you who began a good work are going to continue it. And we're at the threshold of, of, a, of a beautiful change. So keep us in prayer. By the way, this is the color scheme. Uh, these banners are the color scheme of the other building. Uh, and uh, we've got work to do, but it's going to take place. So you may be seated. Thank you. We're going to receive the tithes and offerings. The El Shaddai anointing be on every giver. The God who is more than enough. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the gift as well as the giver. Cause that to be a new anticipation in the things that are coming in place. And I'll tell you one of the things that we're going to see happen. Jason's preaching part two today. And something that we're going to call forth in Jason. He doesn't know I'm going to do this. But uh, actually, Sid Roth had a word for Jason. And he says... 
that Jason's discernment, he needs to start calling out the good things he sees in people. He, he, can, read, he can read your mail better than just about anybody I've known and, uh, over the years. And the, the beautiful part of it is it's not finding what's wrong with somebody. <laughs> the beautiful part is it's seeing the gold. Now, it might, might, might need some mining, but nonetheless, the gold is in there, right? We want to get it to the surface. So, Father, we just thank you. We thank you for the days that we're living in. We're thankful for all that you're doing. Our, uh, we were also taped on Sid Ross, uh, It's Supernatural, and that should be airing sometime. I don't know. They haven't told us yet, but I'm guessing March, if not March, beginning of April. We'll find out eventually, but uh, we taped it in January, but it'll probably show in March or April. And anything else? I'm excited about where we're at right now. I'm excited about what we're doing. Be even more excited if they turn the air conditioning on. <laughs> so, but uh, of course, that's the heat of the Holy Spirit. Just, it just warming your hearts to get you ready. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So we're not going to put no pressure on Jason, but I think he should be able to read everybody's mail at will. You know, when, when Jason first came to us in kind of a ragged, rugged condition, he still could basically tell who was genuine and who was who was walking the walk and who was just talking the talk and, and stuff like that. But he had a tendency to not pull out the negative. He perceived the negative, but look for the goal that's under the negative and say, let's start, you know, most prophecy is supposed to be comfort, edify, and encourage. And I've seen it deteriorate into, into just what's wrong with people. All right? I could do that and not even be a Christian. Huh? How many of you could tell... What's wrong with people when you weren't a Christian? That's called fault finding. That is not a gift. <laughs> All right? But the real prophetic is going to pull the gold out. The real prophetic is going to be redemption. Redemption is the name of the game. If I don't hear redemption, you know, when we were taught to prophesy, I remember years ago, my first pastorate, they were all, the bulk of the church was at what we call level three, which they could prophesy for a half hour straight over, over someone. And it, they were, and we were all taught that when you prophesy even a corrective word, they should want to take you out to dinner. If it's got the love and the wisdom of God behind it, they will sense that. Jennifer, come on up here. Let's say, let's say Jennifer, one of Jennifer's strengths is she's being troubled by some medical issues and, and she's having difficulty oscillating between trusting God and not trusting God. Here's the way we would have... This is the way we would have dealt with that. If we knew that by the Spirit, that she was oscillating between trusting God and not trusting God over her physical health, we'd just say, daughter, I just see the Lord bringing you into a place of more implicit trust. He's going to cause you to be like that anchor that goes in behind the veil to where you attach and you hold fast to those things that God has given you. In Christ. And the promises of God are, they're down there deep, but they're coming forward to the surface. And you're going to hang on because there's a light at the end of that tunnel. And a more implicit trust is what he has for you or something like that. They don't get mad, right? That wouldn't make you angry, would it? But yet it does, it does deal with the lack of trust. And, but it's speaking to the solution. Prophecy should have a redemptive solution, or quite frankly, most of the time I shelve a lot of prophetic words that do not have a redemptive solution. If you're going to give me a word, give me the answer. And if Jesus is the answer, I want to hear Jesus in the answer. That's a corrective word right there. <laughs> You still love me? You want to take me out to lunch? <laughs> so.